Hey everybody, it's Angel's Calamity, and welcome back to Dream Daddy. This is part 17. Ignore the loud puppies in the back. We have puppies. And they're loud. So, we're running through and dating everybody for the first date. And I don't remember who we have left. Let me make sure. I don't remember. Welcome. You've got dads. I do indeed have dads. Okay, so, um... We've been with Craig and Matt, and we've been with Robert and Damien. I think we need to do Hugo and Brian. Let's see if we can knock both those out this time. And, oh, we have a dad book thing. Wait a minute, what? Loki, listen, this is you from the past. Oh, real quick, I am still getting over that sinus infection. It has kicked my ass royally, so I'm a little congested, a little bit of hit hit, so just bear with me. Loki, listen, this is you from the past. Whoa. Whoa. How'd this happen? I figure you're trying to reply to this because I know myself, but this is an automated message from you earlier this morning when it was socially unacceptable to go out and buy ice cream. I forgot I did that. I forgot how I did that as well. The future is amazing. Listen, life is short and ice cream it should always be acceptable, but unfortunately this isn't the society we live in. And it's less the society we live in and more me projecting my own anxiety about being judged unto others. But you know what I mean. By the time you're reading this, it's a certain time of day in which nobody will bat an eye at you going out to buy an ice cream. You know what to do. Be good to me. We're going to go buy ice cream. Hell yeah. Hell yeah. I love me some ice cream. In moderation, because I have sensitive teeth. Dog patting sounds. You know what? I've earned a treat. On the way home, I decided to stop off and grab some ice cream. Which I fully... Way home from where? We literally just got that dad book text from the house. Anyway, uh, which I fully plan to eat directly from the tub. I spend a lot of time trying to figure out just which type of ice cream I'd like to eat directly from the tub. Rocky Road, pistachio. Oh man, is probably going to want some too. Better get two tubs. She loves cookie dough ice cream, right? Mint. Mint chocolate chip is a way to go. Hey, mister. I turn around to see Ernest leaning up against the wall of the convenience store. Sorry, there's puppy sounds. They just need to chill out and go to sleep. Ernest? You're cool, right? Um, I'm cool. I'm cool, but I don't see what this has to do with anything. Well, if you're cool, you'll help me out, right? Help you out? There's no fire involved, is there? Just clouds. So if I give you twenty dollars, will you buy me e-liquid, kid? Kid, Ernest, what's e-liquid? It's like uh, Gatorade, you know, electrolyte liquid. I get it myself, but I'm banned from here for trying to run a grift on the cashier. A classic fiddle game, you know the deal. Oh, if you're talking about balanced electrolytes, then I got you, little buddy. And if I didn't know you played the fiddle. Just ask the clerk for blue Cranzapple Vortex. He'll know what it is. Oh, no. I pick up a tub of pistachio ice cream for myself and a tub of cookie dough for Amanda. I search around for some blue Crazen Void Star Starer, but can't seem to find any. Say, where's your finest e-liquid? Behind the counter. You got an ID? First of all, my daughter is older than you. Second of all, I'm flattered. But I switched shampoo recently, and that is taking some years off. Look, you need to be 21 to buy vape juice. Your hair doesn't look a day over 20. I mean, I guess thank you. Wait a minute. Are you just trying to butter me up to get me to buy more ice cream? Because it's working. I glance outside and spot Ernest staring at me. Double wait a minute. So you're telling me that e-liquid is not a sports drink? It's for vaping. Ernest is watching us intently through the window. I better go give that kid a piece of my mind. I see. Okay, look, I'm going to pretend that you didn't try to trick me into buying you the old Bath Mint's cough syrup and then go inside there to purchase my ice cream. I won't tell your dad if you promise to scram. 
and stop vaping. You'll get popcorn lung. No. Okay. Skip to the time stamp on scene on the screen if you don't want to hear this. It'll be quick though. Popcorn lung is created when you vape diacetyl. Diacetyl is a flavoring in some vape fluids that tastes like butter. Now, diacetyl, once they found out, because they actually use diacetyl to flavor artificial popcorn, but once they found out that when you vape it, it reacts, and when you inhale it, it reacts badly with your lungs. Uh, people working in the factory would use, that's why it's called popcorn lung. But they don't make vape fluids with diacetyl anymore because they realize the danger of it. So, you know, do your research, Loki. Do your research. Anyway. Uh, stop it and get pop one. What if I give you $25? Go home, Ernest. I'm walking, as I'm walking back inside, Ernest calls after me. You can get popcorn line from microwave popcorn, you know. If you breathe it. I no longer trust this child, but the mere notion strikes fear into my heart. Weird. I go back inside to com complete my purchase with the good cashier. Thank you, kind sir, for your time and generous hair compliments. You got it, bub. I glance out the window to see Ernest still outside. Looks like he's talking to some other poor sap. Guess I should go outside and save this guy some grief. At that point, I would tell his father, or just take this kid home. Wait a second. That's definitely a cop. Oh, boy. I grab my tubs of ice cream and bolt outside. Uh-oh. Ernest is already face down on the hood of a squad car. Uh-oh. Scadios. Ernest, did you seriously just try to get a cop to buy you e-liquid? Do you know this kid? I'm friends with his dad. My daughter goes to school with him. Never met him in his life. Look, I'm going to do... I'm going to help this kid. I'm going to help this kid. I'm friends with his dad. Uh, yeah, we live in the same cul-de-sac. I know his dad. Listen, he's a good kid, and I'm this... Oh, it's probably Hugo, right? Isn't Hugo his dad? What was Hugo's voice? Damn it. I'm this boy's father. I turn around to see... Oh, it's Robert. Robert, good sir, you are not this boy's father. You guys don't even have the same complexion. I turn around to see Robert, Robert walking up the street and toward the convenience store. Oh. Ernest, what are you doing? I want a lawyer. Mm. First of all, good first instinct. Remember that you're not required to answer any questions from a police officer without a lawyer present. You're this boy's father. I... Yes, sir. Ernest likes to lash out at me like this ever since the accident. Oh, um... I don't like talking about it. That's fine. Mm -hmm. Robert gets a wistful wistful twinkle in his eye. I... It all started seven summers ago. My hair was long then. New metal was still in style. Ernest and I were down with, in the Florida swampland scavenging for. Sir, I can leave you to take it from here. Oh. Sounds good. Thanks, officer. Mm. Ernest, come along now. You'll be cleaning grout from the rain gutter for, for a week thanks to this transgression. The police officer gets in his car and drives off. I'm stunned by how cool Robert was just there. Thanks. I want to say Richard. Ouch. Huh. Don't mention it, Hemingway. Got in trouble plenty of times in my life just trying to do my good deed for the day. Will you buy me e-liquid if I give you $20? Child. <laughs> Child, I will end you. Oh. Hey, Loki, will you walk Ernest home with me? Sure. Oh. Ooh, ooh, ooh. Ernest runs ahead, presumably he won't, to, so he won't be seen with us, which is a thing I think kids do. He reminds me a lot of myself when I was his age. Huh. Well, maybe I wasn't as dumb. Seems like he tortures his dad. There. Seems like he tortures just about everybody. He even stole your wallet. What? No, he did. I pat my back pocket. I pat the rest of my pockets. He stole my wallet. Mm. Why are you doing this to yourself? I what? Robert points at my tubs of ice cream. Look, don't you at me, sir. Here's your middle finger for you. Maybe if you didn't ignore me so much when I tried to get lucky with your ass, maybe I wouldn't need these tubs of ice cream, all right? Okay? What, one of them's for Amanda. Oh. I have no qualms with the quantity of ice cream you've purchased. It's a perfectly respectable amount of ice cream. It's the quality I'm talking about. Oh. oh, you work hard, Loki. You're a good dad. Don't you think you deserve top shelf ice cream? But these were on sale. What? What does Loki do? What does any of them do? What are their jobs? Other than Hugo, he's got a job. Uh, Joseph has a job. 
Um, Damien's just fucking loaded. Yeah, I don't know what any. Oh, Craig's a fitness. Something with fitness, and he does a mini softball team. Anyway. Oh. If you're going to treat yourself, go big or go home. Real vanilla bean, real pistachio. You deserve it. Hey. Oh, thank you. We arrive at the cul de sac, and Ernest runs into his home. Uh -huh. That boy is the reason why we don't have prizes and cereal anymore. <laughs> hey. Catch you around, Loki. Robert tosses me my wallet. I catch it with a surprised look on my face. Mm -hmm. I stole it back. Mm -hmm. Keep it in your front pocket or use a chain and like or use a chain like in back in your ska days. Oh, so you were listening. Smell you later. See ya, Robert. I go back inside my home, ready to spend the rest of the night with two tubs of ice cream and also Amanda. Can I spend the night with Robert? No, 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 we're going for Damien. We're going for our goth nerd boy. That's who we're going for. Robert's Welcome. trouble. Robert's You've trouble. Dads. All right. Let's start. Should we start with Hugo? I think we should start with Hugo and then go for Brian. We're going to message him. All right. I navigate to Do Hugo's dad book page and type out a message. I'll finish reading it when it posts. Hey, hey, Hugo. Great seeing you at the barbecue. Want to hang out sometime? I wait for a few minutes before the computer dings. I'm so glad you messaged me. And I definitely want to hang out sometime. But I have a favor to ask. Our class is going on a field trip to the aquarium today. And one of our chaperones called in sick. Is there any possible way you could come by and replace them? Uh-oh. Oh, I'd be so down. I'd be so down. Take me, Daddy. I want to go see the... F I mean, watch the children. Uh-oh. I think about it for a moment. I completely understand if you don't want to or can't make it, but I'm going to be honest with you here. It's a middle school class. I need as much help as I can get. I think about it for a moment. Man, that's a lot of screaming kids that I'd be accountable for. And they're in middle school, arguably the worst age to be. Amanda silently trudges into the kitchen and pulls her, pours herself a bowl of cereal. Morning, Amanda. Morning, Pops. Hey, how was middle school for you? Ugh. Bad, but nobody likes middle school. It's three years of bad acne, crying, and being generally terrible. Aww. Everyone sucks. No self-awareness. It's just a bunch of hormonal teenagers locked in a gross old building for 40-plus hours a week, doing long division and starting fights over, I don't know, pizza day? Top 40s pop? Middle schoolers should be avoided at all cost. Hmm. What was your middle school experience like? I don't remember. I didn't like it. I thought it was fine. Honestly, me, I don't fucking remember because I don't remember shit and I didn't go to a public middle school. That's a story for another time, good friends. And Loki didn't either, so we're going to go with I don't remember. It was so long ago, we probably rode dinosaurs to class and bartled, bartered for lunch with the tiny skulls of animals we had slain. You probably had to walk uphill in the snows both ways too, huh? And we liked it. Oh. See, middle schoolers are re reprehensible. Wait, why are you asking me about middle school? Oh, Mr. Baker requested my help to chaperone his middle school class to the aquarium. He just wanted, I just wanted to know what I was in for. Mm. You get to go to the aquarium? Are you kidding me? Mm. The last field trip I got to go on was a clam chowder factory. They didn't even give us clam chowder. They gave us square pizza at a clam chowder factory. Oh, is that why you don't eat clam chowder anymore? No, we don't eat clam chowder because it's disgusting. Don't act. No, it's because Bobby Wellingham threw up into one of those vats of clam chowder, and I'm the only one who saw it happen. It haunts me. Right, let's leave that storm story firmly in the past. Oh. Anyway, you should just do it, Mr. Vega. Sounds like you could really use the help. Plus, you get to hang out with cool fish. Amanda, I get kind of weird about aquariums. The ocean makes me nervous. Well, come on. It's, it's safe, right? It's like, if you ever played Subnautica... You have all the reason in the world to be nervous, okay? Okay, so, cause Subnautica, man. Subnautica. <clears throat> what, are you worried about a, a, that a whale is gonna pop out of the touch tank and swallow you whole? Don't you put fear that fear in my heart. Well, do they have penguins there? Yes, they have penguins there. Yes! Then it settles. Penguins outweigh the fear of ocean. I sit back down at the computer and let Hugo know I'm available. He tells me to meet him at the aquarium and gives me the address. I grab my keys and kiss a man on the forehead before I head out. Doesn't she need to go to school, too? I mean, you know. 
I arrive at the aquarium to find that the school buses have beaten me there. Preteens huddle around their teachers in small groups, yelling at each other and goofing off. Every teacher looks like they're at their wit's end. I don't know. Hugo jogs up to me, looking frazzled. You don't have to jog. Like, I'm here. There's no need for that. I'm so glad you're here. Hugo! Uh... It's been a debacle all morning. We've shorthanded, and most of the kids won't stop screaming, as I'm sure you know is the case with all middle schoolers. Unfortunately, I've lived through Amanda at 12. I'm all too familiar. Ah. Great. Well, it's you and me chaperoning a group of ten kids. They're over there. Hugo walks me over to a gaggle of preteens who are all sitting on the ground playing with their phones. They're not kicking each other like some of the other groups, so we're off to a good start. Hmm. Can you guys put your phones away? All of the kids look up for a moment to stare at Hugo. Then they go back to texting. At least they're quiet. Um... Too quiet. These guys are up to something. I can feel it. There's no way. They're too busy thinking about not getting food stuck in their braces to pull any stunts. It's middle school, after all. Oh. We'll see. The classes start filing into the aquarium, and Hugo hands out massive staple packets of paper to each kid. These are due at the end of the field trip. Yes, this will be in for a grade. No, you can't borrow a pencil. These kids collectively groan and grab the sheets from Hugo. What's in the packet? Hey. Honestly, it's just busy work, so the teachers can have a moment's reprieve. I think one of the questions asks them to sit quietly for ten minutes and think about the Great Barrier Reef. Teacher hacks. I like that. Wait, I thought you were an English teacher. What does the aquarium have to do with books? Hmm? We just did a unit on the old man in the sea. Nothing quite like introducing kids to the futile perspective of the human spirit by making them pet stingrays. Oh! It gives us time to check out some of the exhibits as well. Come on, they give us a phenomenal selection of tropical fish. While the kids sit on the floor and pretend to do their assignments while they text, Hugo and I wander over to a large tank filled with brightly colored fish. Hugo points to a brown and white fish with long spines. Ah! That right there is a lion fish. Did you know their stomachs can expand up to 30 times in size? Whoa. Mmm. Their spines are venomous, too. Nature is hardcore. Oh! You think that's bad? Take a look at this one over here. Hugo points to a spiny, grumpy-looking fish hanging out near the bottom of the tank. Mmm. That's a stonefish, the most venomous fish in the world. And they just, like, keep it here? Oh, they're relatively harmless, harmless, as long as you don't step on them. What happens if you step on them? Hmm? Tissue necrosis. Oh my. Cool. Hmm. Nature is wild. Man, Hugo seems to know a lot about fish. I feel the overwhelming need to impress him. Hey, see that fish over there? Oh. That one? Yeah, that's the... Oh god. Why? Why? American longfin, blue nose wiggly fish, or hump head wrasse? Let's go with the blue nose wiggly fish, because that sounds very impress important. Oh. Did you know that? Uh, paranormal fish trivia, psychiatric fish trivia, or political fish trivia? Let's go paranormal. This fish sleeps upside down, but contrary to popular belief, it's not an actual vampire. That's the vampire fish. Oh. Wait. Are you serious? Uh, absolutely not. Let's be honest. I'm playing it for the gag here. Oh! Ha! <laughs> Good one. We lead the kids to another room. Sharks, sea turtles, eels, and other marine life swim around in a massive Florida ceiling aquarium. The get kids begin trying to take selfies with the sharks. <sighs> of course they do. Hugo leaves my side to separate two kids who started fighting over Capri Sun. I walk around the room, le reading the tiny little blurbs about different fish swimming inside of the enclosures. After a while, I look around and see Hugo again. He's gazing up at the aquarium in childlike wonder. The ripples in the water cast blue moving shadows across his face. For someone surrounded by angry, hormonal, hormonal preteens, he looks completely peaceful. He looks really cute in this light. I hope he doesn't notice me staring. Wow. Mm. I walk over to join him. Beautiful, isn't it? I'd rather stare at you. We can learn a great deal from Mother Ocean. Are those two sharks kissing? Look. I would flirt with this boy. But my heart belongs to Damien. I'm sorry. This playthrough is Damien. We can learn a great deal from Mother Ocean. That's what I'm going to say. 
A great many mysteries lie in the ocean. It truly is fascinating to be able to observe it in a setting such as this. Wish my fridge would turn off and quit making all that racket. That's a very astute point, Loki. I got eggplants. Does that mean what I think it means? We stand together for a moment, admiring the wonders of marine life. We eventually make it our way to the touch tank room, which seems to be the only thing the kids are actually interested in. The tank is filled with a variety of horseshoe crabs, sea urchins, stingrays, and small fish. Listen, listen, if you're going to keep complaining, I'm going to just hold on to you. How's that sound? Look, I just took a selfie with the puppy. It's crap because I look tired, but I've been sick. So, if you want to see that uh, that picture, you'll have to look on my social media pages, which is Facebook and Instagram and Twitter. So, if you want to see that, that picture of cute little puppy, you have to go there. Anyway. I stand around the edges of the tank and keep a wary distance from the sea life. Who knows what kind of nefarious plans those horseshoes have. Crabs have from my very moisturized. <clears throat> Who knows what kind of nefarious plans those horseshoe crabs have for my well moisturized hands? N probably not what you think, but okay. Hugo rolls up his sleeve and sticks his hand in the water. Don't you want to pet some rays, Loki? Oh, I think I'm good. I don't really. I think I should just stay over here and re admire them from a respectable distance. Come on, it'll be fun and informative. Don't make fun of me, but I'm scared to touch them. I get weird when there's no glass separating us. I don't know what any of those things are, but I'm feeling they will probably bite me and my delicious hands if given the chance. Nothing in this tank can hurt you. The stingrays, uh, the stingrays have had their barbs removed, and the horseshoe crabs only eat little clams, and the anemones are perfectly safe to touch. Against my better judgment, I approach the tank, slowly dipping my hand into the cold water. I just touch a stingray as it glides past me. See? Not so bad. It, it feels like fun, slimy leather. That's an image in my mind that I did not need. Thank you, Loki. Things get a lot less scary when you learn more about them, right? I dive my hand back into the touch tank with a renewed vigor for ocean life. I poke at some urchins and feel the carapace of a horseshoe crab. My hand rushes against Hugo's as we reach for the same anemone. I pull away, blushing. Hey, no one asked you, Tara. Hugo smiles at me. Hey, you're supposed to be touching the fish. Sorry, I just get a little carried away sometimes. Wait, that girl over there looks suspicious. Why is that? Hmm? Our backpack's usually that wet. Hold on. Susan? Susan, get back here. Hugo runs after a middle schooler and catches her before she can make it to the exit. Want to tell me what's in the bag? Uh, textbooks? Want to tell me what's really in the bag? Susan won't budge. Hey, shut up. Shut up. No, don't complain at me. I'm holding you now. I walk over to Hugo and the girl. I think he might be need a bad cop. Look, kid. We don't have time for games here. There's an easy five and to ten in the clink. I'm not afraid to hit a child. We'll say we don't have time for... Oh, she's licking me. Okay, we're going to say we don't have time for fun and games here. Whatever it is, it goes back into the touch tank now. You're not a teacher. You can't tell me what to do. Hmm? Yes, well, I am. Can you please put the bag down? Next time, we won't say please. Susan glares at Hugo for a moment before dropping her book bag on the floor. It lands with a wet slap. Ooh, we stare at it for a moment before it starts to move. Whoa! Hugo leans, leans down and unzips a backpack. A horseshoe crab frantically scuttles out and across the floor. An employee sco swoops in, scoops it up, and places it back into the tank. She gives us a disapproving look. Jesus, Susan, what was your plan? Well... That's my alarm to go pick up my children. And that means, little Baldy, who's chewing on my finger, I need to put you back with the other puppies. I was trying to free him. To where? Outside? Where he was gonna die? Hmm. Susan, go back to your group. We'll discuss this later. Yeah. <clears throat> yeah, and hands where we can see him. Susan sulks off, leaving me alone with Hugo. She gives me a pat on the shoulder. Oh. 
Middle schoolers have sticky hands. I doubt that's the first time that's happened here. Or the last. In the next room, we see a variety of smaller tanks, sea urchins, tiny fish, and a rainbow of beautiful underwater plant life surrounds us. Oh! Look over there! Look over here! Hugo points to some seahorses gathered at the bottom of a tank. One of them is in the middle of giving birth. Mm. That's actually the male seahorse. Sort of takes fatherhood to a new level, doesn't it? Hey kids, come check this out. There's a male seahorse giving birth. A low murmur from the students. They just jump back to their phones. Oh. Fun fact, male seahorses can even give birth and then get pregnant in the same day. Man, we thought we had it hard. Hey. I wonder if they have to deal with their kids' awkward teenage years, too. Oh, however many thousand of them. You seem to know a lot about marine life, Hugo. Oh. It's not really my specialty, but I do make a point to learn as much as I possible whenever I can. I think that learning shouldn't end when you leave school. We should challenge ourselves to find out more about the things we don't understand every day of our lives. Yes. Because if you stop learning, I don't think you'll ever be able to grow or change as a person. Good point. But I still don't trust the ocean. <laughs> we'll get there. We finally make our way over to our favorite part of the t to my favorite part of the tour, the Arctic exhibit. Do we get to see the penguins? Oh. Yes, we get to see the penguins. Hell yes. Penguins! Our group of kids run around the exhibits. They won't stop tapping on the glass of the puffin enclosure trying to get their attention. For at least a few moments, teachers, chaperones, and students alike seem to be having a great time. What was I so worried about? This isn't too bad. Whoa. Hugo suddenly grabs my arm. Oh my god, there's a student in the penguin enclosure. Oh no. Wait. <laughs> Wait, just kidding. It's very bad. Is it one of ours? Eh. It most certainly is. Molly Henderson, Susan's friend. I look over to the penguins and see a determined looking kid crouching behind a rock. She's hiding just out of sight of one of the employees. Over on the side of the enclosure, I see the door to the exhibit ajar. Was it unlocked this whole time? We gotta stop her before the staff sees her and bans our school for life. Hugo looks around. I don't know. I'll create a distraction. Hugo runs toward the puffin exhibit and addresses the entire room. Eh. Everybody, 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 I have an announcement. The whole room turns toward Hugo. Eh. Um. Ah. Here's a few facts I bet you didn't know about penguins. Everybody just stares at Hugo, confused. Well, this is my shot. I run to the enclosure, and I'm greeted by a cold blast of air. Psst, hey. The girl whips around to look at me. Her nose is pink from the cold. You can't be in here. Sorry, I've got kids, and they don't understand the meaning of the words quiet. There it is. Neither can you. I try to walk over to the girl, but the ground is so icy, I just end up slipping. I catch myself before I hit the ground, but the girl still laughs at me. <sighs> Contrary to popular belief, penguins are birds. Birds are traditionally known to fly, but penguins cannot. So I can understand some confusion when we're discussing the birdness of penguins. The crowd is still somehow enraptured. Kid, what are you even doing? I'm letting the penguins go. They deserve freedom. Where are they even going to go? They're going to live in my closet. Look, I don't even have to ar time to argue about this. We gotta get out of here. Not until I save a penguin. I don't know. Little known fact that penguins only live in cold climates, uh, with some exceptions. So they don't all live in cold climates if you're splitting hairs here. Did I mention that they don't fly? The crowd is starting to lose interest. I th I'm running out of time. Lay down the law, try to relate to her, bribe her. Uh oh, how are we gonna get this kid? I don't think lay down the law is going to work. Uh, bribing might work, but I don't want to bribe her. We're going to try to relate to her. I think back to the time I realized all the feeder, released all the feeder mice from the pet store. It was a disaster. I was six, but it was a disaster. Molly, you know, life can be cruel. Money, give me money. Oh, God, no. I will give you $20 right now if you leave with me. Molly thinks for a second. Okay, well, give it to me right now. I reach into my pocket and pull out everything I have, examining each bill. Okay, well, I have 12 and some change. Also, there's a button here. Is that enough? Pay me the other eight later, and we have a deal. You little shit. We move to, this, to shake on, on our arrangement before I suddenly realize there's a wave of penguins on their way out of the enclosure. We gotta have, we're going to have to block these birds. Oh, no. Oh, God, here we go. 
block that bird. Okay, how do I? Oh, like this. Blep. Oh, no, 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 no. That's... How do I do this? Oh! Oh, jeez, I have to hit the button. I thought I'd be blocking it like that. Okay, okay, I got this. Get out of here, penguins. Why are they all purple? Okay, too many hands is bad because they just ping off of each other. Like that. Unless I just spam it. Yes, yeah, spam it. Spam it. And then they just bounce off of each other. Bad penguins. Bad penguins. Bad penguins. Bad penguins. Oh. Yeah, yeah, I'm bribing the team. Okay, we're out. Oh, one of the penguins has some money. <laughs> I lost one penguin because I didn't know what the hell I was doing. Oopsie doodle. Uh, bribery works, rank S. <laughs> Oops. You. Phew, glad that's over. Just in time, too. Looks like Hugo's wrapping up his diversionary penguin hey. speech. And that's why I think penguins are one of the best animals in the world. A few people in the audience clamp out of a se clap out of a sense of duty. Everybody starts dispersing. Hugo spots us from across the way and runs over. Molly, what were you doing in there? I was liberating animals, Mr. Vega. You realize that the penguins can only survive in Arctic temperatures, right? You would have had a dead penguin on your hands. Well... Um, it was the thought that counts? No, Molly, it wasn't. Molly turns to me. You owe me eight dollars. Whoa. What? Just, I'll pay you later, kid. Molly runs off towards Susan. I suppose that they can compare animal thief oh. notes. You're n not off the hook, Molly. Oh. Loki, did you just bribe a child? I tried not to. You can't play by the rules when there are penguins on the line. I bribed a child. Uh, you can't play by the rules when there's... I don't know what she's talking about. I'm not gonna lie. But you can't play by the rules when there's penguins on the line. Listen, man. We've all done dark things in our lives. I'm not the young, bright-eyed youth I used to be. That person believed in a world where you didn't have to, wouldn't have to bribe children to save a penguin. The me today knows different. I only wish I could go back. Mm -hmm. Let's just get through the day and get out of here. With the day finally coming to a close, the whole field trip is ushered through the gift shop and we make our way back to the school buses. As we leave the aquarium and the kids load onto the buses, Hugo pulls me ah. aside. Hey, Loki, thank you so much for helping out today. You're a lifesaver. It was no problem. It was actually kind of fun. Ah. Let me take you out the next time and make it up to you. You like cheese boards? Uh, I love cheese boards. I'm all like, oh, cheese boards, there's nothing more on earth more exciting and satisfying than a good cheese board. Um, listen, Hugo, it's nothing against you personally. I'm just not going to date you again. In this playthrough, when I play it by myself, I might date you again. But I'm going to tell you I love cheese boards. Great. Well, i got to go make sure the kids don't steal anything else. See you around. I walk inside to find the house empty. Hmm, I wonder where the panda's at. Before I know it, Amanda pops in through the front door. What's you up to tonight? Just doing some homework. How was the aquarium? It was an adventure. Some kid tried to steal a penguin. <sighs> We've all been there. I had to run in and grab her before any of the employees saw. You got to go to the penguin enclosure? Did you steal a penguin for us? Amanda, no penguins were stolen thanks to the valiant efforts of myself and Mr. Vega. It was nice getting to spend some time with Hugo, though. I'm surprised he helped complete a covert op. He's usually kind of a... Kind of a what? Kind of a stick in the mud? He's actually pretty cool. I had a good time with him. Alright, too much adventure... <clears throat> All right, too much adventure for me today. I'm going to have to go rest my eyes. You mean take a nap? There's a difference. You'll learn when you become a father. No, there's n no, there's not. No, taking a nap is taking a nap. Oh, yeah, date complete. Mandel's goofy tweed confidence fish touch tank. Well, confidence was kind of trash, but, you know. That was so good, you gave me goosebumps. I gave you goosebumps, did I? Well, you know, I try. Rank S, even though we lost a single penguin, but that's okay. Welcome. You've got dads. All right, we've got dads. And I did say I wanted to break, date Brian this time, but 
honestly, I don't really have the time to now because my children are home, and I'm sure, pretty sure you've been able to hear them. You might be hearing them now. So I'm going to leave this one right here. I'm sorry. Uh, we'll fin we'll do Brian's date next time, and then we'll finish up with Damien's final date. They might be sure uh, Brian's date's going to be a shorter video because I was hoping I'd get another side quest, but I'm not seeing one. And that's okay. But for now, we're going to leave this one right here. I'm going to save my game. This has been Angel's Calamity playing Dream Daddy Part 17, I think. Whatever part it is, thanks for watching. We'll see you guys in the next one. Bye-bye.